to this episode of Adventures in Raising Grants, The Lowdown. In this episode, we will be talking about self-care. We will explain what it is and why it is so important for grandparents raising grandchildren. Self-care seems to be a pretty self-explanatory word. Self-care. Take care of yourself. Grandparents raising grandchildren need to know how important it is to take care of themselves. Since discovering how important it is, we have changed our lives a bit. We have changed our lifestyles by adding back in the things that we stopped doing when the grandchildren came to live with us. Things such as quilting for me, some woodworking for Ed, and other things that we enjoyed, like reading and playing with these videos. This is our self-care. We want to make sure that everyone else also remembers to take care of themselves. Self-care is a process to enhance your physical, spiritual, and mental well-being. Self-care looks differently for everyone, even though it has the same impact. Self-care caters to the individualisticness of each self. Only you can decide what's best for you. There are three basic aspects of self-care, spiritual, mental, and physical. Spiritual refers to activities that make you feel connected such as devotions or writing or meditation. Mental refers to activities that stimulate your brain, such as reading and writing, setting goals, making vision boards, even playing games like word search and crossword puzzles. Physical refers to your body, making it healthy by eating right and exercising and going to your doctor's appointments. This is all self-care. Physically can also refer to things that you do for yourself physically, like getting a new hairstyle or your nails done, taking a walk, or a hot bath even. Self-care should happen on a daily basis. Don't wait for a special day, like Mother's Day or for your birthday, because every day on our adventure is a special day. Some people think that self-care is selfish, but it's not. It's just the opposite. My favorite example of self-care is when they teach you on an airplane that when the oxygen mask comes down to first put your own oxygen mask on before trying to help others. Because if you were to pass out trying to put on someone else's mask, then you would be of no help to anyone. It's often said that you cannot pour from an empty cup. You must first fill up your own cup before you can pour into others. Taking care of yourself first makes it possible for you to take care of others. So make sure that you're putting on your mask and you're filling up your cup because you are just as important as anyone else. When you're not taking care of yourself, you can find yourself being empty. You may have feelings of hopelessness and anger. You may become weepy and grouchy and grumpy and crabby and resentful kind of like a two-year-old without a nap. The lack of self-care can have an effect on your physical well-being as well. You may suffer from headaches and muscle tension, as well as indigestion issues. Not taking care of yourself can also have sleep disturbances. It may cause you to have problems falling asleep as well as staying asleep, and you will feel tired all the time. Self-care is anything that benefits your needs. Be sure to schedule time daily. Set your alarm clock for 10 to 15 minutes early in the morning. Give yourself some quiet time to have a morning ritual or just a cup of coffee, a chance to look at Facebook and read today's entries on Grandparents Raising Grands if you're in that support group. Try starting a morning ritual that gets you moving in the morning. Be sure to incorporate some spiritual, mental, and physical into that ritual. You can try exercising while listening to an audiobook, or a few yoga poses and a journal entry. Personally, every morning when I wake up, I take a few minutes to think about what I want to accomplish that day. And then I remind myself that on this adventure, I'm lucky to be on it. And on this adventure, I'm happy. So that every day I start my day off positive. In the evenings, Set aside some time to check in with yourself and see what you've accomplished. I know some days that will be a short list, and that's okay. I have a blessing journal that I write in every night. I write down the things that I'm blessed with, 
the things that I'm thankful for each and every day of this adventure. Self-care includes setting boundaries and allowing no negativity into your life. It's setting up a support system with others. It's not allowing critics to say you're selfish and avoid people who don't support you. A very important part of self-care is also forgiveness. Forgiveness of yourself and forgiveness of others. Here are some examples of things that you can do for self-care. Just remember to choose what's right for you. You could do things like read a book, take a hot bath, go to the gym, yoga, hang out with your friends, go hiking, have a glass of wine, a pedicure, a manicure, or even a new hairstyle. Sitting in the hot tub, join a sports team, watch sports on TV even. Try some gardening, learn to play an instrument, listen to some music, do some stargazing, do some shopping online. You could even go to the movies or eat at a restaurant. Anything that makes you feel good. Self-care is not the exercise that you get chasing a two-year-old running around the house or cleaning up after the rest of the family. That's not self-care. Self-care are the things that make you happy. Things that make you feel like you've been rejuvenated. Things that fill your cup. If you're really having a hard time trying to figure out what your self-care should be, you could always try brainstorming. Brainstorming is a great way to come up with ideas. Just take a sheet of paper and write down all the things that you would love to do if money and time were no object. You can always go back later and change some things around or improvise and find ways to do those things. Now it's time for this week's adventure challenge. This week's challenge is to read with your grands. Take your grandchildren to a library or pull some books out that you have at home and have a little reading session, take some photos, and send them to our email. Our email is located at the end of this video. Here are some photos of our children reading one of their books. Be sure to like and subscribe, and share this video with anyone that you think may benefit from seeing it. Share it with your friends, your family, Share a link to your Facebook so all your friends can see it. Thank you. Stay tuned for our next episode, which we'll be discussing children that suffer from PTSD. Remember, send in those photos.